What's up, y'all? Malcolm Nix. Welcome to Pulse City. And in the city, all black lives matter. Our topic for today is mass incarceration. The catalyst for this discussion is Khalif Broder. If you don't know the story of Khalif, he's a young man who was arrested for allegedly stealing a book bag. Had to spend three years on Rikers Island because he couldn't afford the bail. Upon being released from jail, he struggled to adapt, to readjust to his regular life, and ended up committing suicide, unfortunately. His death ended up being a catalyst for bail reform in the country. That being said, if you go back to the 70s and 80s, under Nixon with his war on drugs, Reagan who accelerated the war on drugs, and then you take it on through to Bill Clinton in the 90s with the crime bill, it seems that there's been a target on the back of every black and brown man and woman in this country ever since then. The prison population has increased by five and six times what it was prior to the war on drugs initiation. How can we overcome a system that is designed to trap us? You think about someone getting arrested, getting, getting a crime on their record. Now they struggle to gain employment. Then, if you struggle to gain employment, there's a very high chance of recidivism. And recidivism is basically, you're gonna go back into a life of crime and end up in jail again. There are people who have spent the majority of their adulthoods locked behind, locked behind bars because of drugs and other nonviolent offenses who look like me and you. How is that right? How is that fair? He suffered from paranoia, and depression. I can relate to Khalid Browder because I feel like I ain't had no hope. The things that happened to me when I was young traumatized my brain to the point I felt worthless. And I seen the signs that I was depressed. But I'm so prideful because America got the stigma about a man. A man is supposed to be tough. Yes, we are. A man is supposed to be able to stand on his own two feet. Yes, we are. But one thing they don't teach us, a man can hurt too. A man got feelings. Let me tell y'all something. When you see the signs, get help before it's too late. I don't want nobody ending up like Khalid Browder. Because you got a mother, you got family, and you got friends that's missing the loved one because of mental illness. So fellas, when you see the signs, get help. Talk to a friend, talk to a family member if you don't know how to get help because they may lead you to the right resources that you need so that you can get better so that you can be the best black man that you can be. We all in this together, man. We are all in this together. What has been helping me, I've been going on my spiritual journey. And I'm not saying you gotta be religious, but my higher power, I've been giving all my problems to him. Thanks, Malcolm. Hi, it's Nina Kaman, and I'm back with the word. Now it seems that the word today is black male incarceration. Now you see, when I think about this subject, I don't know whether to be sad or whether to be mad. Now you see, I get sad because as a collective, we tend to be poor. And then I get mad because I recognize that we tend to be poor as a collective because we lack knowledge. And we tend to lack knowledge because we lack wealth. And knowledge seems to be for sale in the crooked world that we live in today. 
My people, it is time for us to rise up and seek ye knowledge as a collective. And this is because a system is only as good as its parts. And if the parts do not rise up, if all of the parts do not rise up, how will the system progress? Now, you see, when the parts do not rise up, not only does the system not progress, it actually deteriorates. See, Newton's first law of motion states that a body in motion stays in motion, but a body at rest stays at rest. Now you see, what Newton forgot to tell you is that when a body stays at rest, its parts begin to rust. And as the parts begin to rust, the system itself begins to rot from the inside out. And when the system begins to rot from the inside out, whoo, it gets a rotten reputation. And they love that rotten reputation so they can spread that misinformation amongst themselves so they can use it as a justification to shoot Ahmaud Arbery down on the side of the street when he's jogging one fine day in Georgia. And then they love to spread that rotten reputation and misinformation to our generations. So then they they begin to start this self-negotiation, trying to be more like them and less like we. I mean, who would want to be like we when we got the kind of reputation that we have? My people pray for wisdom, not wealth. There is no amount of wealth that can help us. <laughs> Alakija, Dangote, Oprah, Beyonce, all that money and yet we're still getting killed in the streets. My people pray for wisdom, not wealth. Brother Khalif Browder has a Netflix special. He met with Jay-Z. All the things that you young cats think that that's what's going to make you come up in the game and your life is going to be better. Brother Khalif Browder could not take what they put on him. And that brother hanged himself and his mama found the body. My people pray for wisdom, not wealth. Now I know that there are some amongst you who are going to say, Nina, come on, come on now. I ain't asked for this. I just want to live my life. What's life? The life that you are living is not the life that you are supposed to live. It is time for us to rise up. Whether you like it or not, the facts are the facts. North is up, the earth is round, the world fears black men. Deal with it. Now, hold up now. When I say deal with it, I'm not saying sit back and, and, and frown and do nothing about it. Now see, deal is a verb. And we all know that a verb is an action word. Now you see, Nina Kamon is here to soothe the parts that hurt. But I'm here to kick the rust off your butt if you think you're gonna sit still. Not on my watch, no. So I'm gonna put you on game. Listen up real quick. Money, politics, economics, if it involves those three things, I'm gonna need you to do it if it's legal. Yes, legal, do it. I don't care whether it sounds good to you or not. And you know why? Because the people at the top are playing games with our lives. See, to them, anything involving money, politics, economics, it's a game. You see, they're playing Monopoly with your lives. Meanwhile, we are out here in the streets playing Jumanji. <laughs> And if you don't believe me, didn't we just find out that a certain somebody who claims to be a millionaire only pays $750 of taxes and they became president? Money, politics, economics. Now you see, they're relying on you not using those loopholes. That's why they're there. They're relying on you not using them because they're relying on you not knowing about them. And they're also relying on you not having the heart to use them. And the reason why they can comfortably rely on that is because of the filthy, stinking religion that they fed to you in chains. And my people, let me tell you, religion taught in chains will be practiced in chains. Go read about the nigga Bible. Go read about the Bible where they snatched out the pages that would have given us life and only left us the pages that would give us death. I don't give a damn about what white Jesus got to say. That ain't here. That, that's not what I'm here for today. So listen up my people. Money, politics, economics. If it's legal, you do it. Now hold up. I'm not just going to send you out into the battlefield without some armor because we are a spiritual people. And I recognize that we are a spiritual people and we need something to hold us together on the inside while we go out and seek knowledge on the outside. So walk with me as I share with you a little thing that I like to do from time to time when I feel like I'm losing my knowledge of self. Now you see, I've heard it said that to be African American is to be American without privilege and to be African without knowledge of self. And I found 
one day away from the motherland, I can start to lose my knowledge of self. Now you see, I am the great divide. I am the descendant of slaves and the descendant of an African woman straight from the West Coast. You see, I have returned to the motherland. I have been to the port of no return. I touched the sand that our ancestors' feet tread upon as they were being dragged in chains onto ships to lands where they would never return. And at 13, I felt the strength in that sand. I felt the, the energy of their souls crying out. I know what it is like to regain knowledge of self, so please walk with me in this exercise. Now you see, this is a little something that I like to do and it doesn't matter what you're doing, you can do it at any time. You just need to put your shoulders back, sit up straight or stand up straight. You don't even need to stop what you're doing. Girl, you could be cutting onions, I don't care. You can do this. Now I need for you to get your back straight, head high like a string is dangling you from the creator's loving arms. And I need for you to say to yourself, I am air. I am light. I am the sun. I am light. I am air. I am light. I am the sun. I am light. There's almost a dangerous air about you when you say that. And you see, that's what they saw when they came to the motherland and they feared it and they sought to control it. No more shall we be the playthings of other humans. My people rise up and seek knowledge instead of wealth. Wealth will almost always come from knowledge. To Brother Ahmad Arbery, to Brother Khalif Browder, to Brother Chadwick Bozeman, safe journey home. Hijama. It's Nina come on with the word. And until next time, my people, stay black. Thank you for your contribution to our community. So, after watching the episode tonight, what can you do differently? One thing I've decided to do is put myself in a position where I can better help people build lives for themselves. In my professional life, away from being a superhero and all. I participate in conversations often about hiring and firing and promotions and movements within organizations. Normally, I'm the only dark face in the room. And it's interesting because the majority of the people making these decisions don't look anything like me. Yet in many of the cases, they're making these decisions for people who look like me. And they have no idea the impact that these decisions have on people who look like me. In some cases, a promotion can mean the difference between a ten dollars to $20,000 increase in salary in one year. Think about that. Think about that compounded over the balance of their careers and their ability to save and their ability to build wealth to pass on to their children. Most people don't think about that when it comes to hiring decisions, whether it's at a McDonald's on the corner or whether it's a Fortune 500 boardroom and you're trying to appoint executive vice presidents and vice presidents and executive directors. The fact that the higher up you go, the less diversity you have means something. It means that the people who are making decisions, tangible business decisions, and tangible hiring decisions don't look like the people that those decisions are going to impact. So my goal, since getting into the world that I work in, is getting into those rooms and having an impact on those decisions so that people that look like me and think like me and act like me can have opportunities that they otherwise would not have. I've seen several times where I've been able to be in the room and influence the outcome of that decision. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. But at the end of the day, I'm fighting for people who look like me to have a better life. And if they're in a position to have a better life, they should be in a position to pull somebody else up. And they'll pull somebody else up. And they'll pull somebody else up. It's a chain effect. The ability to build yourself out of poverty, many times has nothing to do with the people who are in it. It has everything to do with the people who are around them, who influence their networks, who have the ability with one phone call or one conversation to put them in a better position than they were in the, the day before. 
Those are the things that I want to impact and those are the impacts that I want to have on people's lives. I'll leave you with this story. I know a young man who I know who had some struggles early in his life. Was struggling to get by and was considering going back to his old ways to make ends meet for his family. Through some connections, the young man reached out to me and said, hey, what you got? And I said, hey, I got a temporary job. You make it what it is. I talked to the hiring manager. They interviewed him, loved him, brought him on. Next thing you know, a few years later, that person is a supervisor in that company, making it happen every day. Continuing to give people who look like me and him similar opportunities, if not better opportunities, to better themselves and do something different with their lives. This isn't a pick yourself up by your bootstraps. This isn't a make better choices discussion. This is all about the ability to help people help people. That being said, thank you for coming to Pulse City. Like, share, and subscribe, and tune in next week. We're coming back to you with that real talk here in the city. Peace out. Oh my God, orange is not my new black.